time that you can buy all this stuff out of China for uh, unbelievable low prices. That includes shipping. It's uh, I don't know if it's sustainable, how much longer it can uh, hold, nothing lasts forever. But while it's around, I for one uh, intend to uh, partake of it. I'm going to feature two items I picked up on, on uh, eBay. Uh, this is not a review, uh, because these two items have already been uh, extensively uh, reviewed on the internet. This one right here uh, gets uh, really good reviews. This one here, not so much, although um, it should get a few points for this colorful box. Let's start here. You guys have seen uh, this particular tool online, right? Uh, it's uh, for uh, surface mount work. Uh, it's a rework station. Uh, I paid uh, $50 Canadian. And that's not even real money. Very inexpensive. It gets really good reviews um, and I think it deserves it. So uh, this is the heads up uh, for you guys that we're going to be graduating to this. You've seen uh, us do a lot of work here uh, with these prototype uh, boards. That's through hole uh, soldering. Components go through here, we solder on the back. Uh, built a couple of oscilloscopes using this. There's a kick-ass HS-102. It's a two channel, plus or minus 15 volt uh, oscilloscope in a nice slim aluminum uh, box that uh, is very close to completion and uh, the video to be released waiting on a couple of components uh, just par for the course here right so uh, there's also going to be some more prototype work i got a couple of uh, pretty nice little ideas here that's going to be uh, more suited to this uh, prototype uh, through hole uh, boards but we're going to also slowly introduce some work that um, we use printed circuit boards and we're going to solder surface mount uh, components on there. Um, we're going to learn together on that because uh, I'm new to this also. So 50 bucks, can't go wrong, allows us access to that technology and uh, gets good reviews. The manufacturer also accommodated the North American market. So it has a 110 volt uh, transformer in here um, for here in Canada and the US. The rest of the world's on 220, right? I'm glad I got this. So here's the second toy. Only 25 bucks, Canadian. Again, that's not real money. So, um, it's a desoldering tool. It seems to be uh, fairly well made for 25 bucks. I mean, uh, you know, I wouldn't complain. Uh, what it's meant for is to replace this um, sucker, and uh, which doesn't suck. Uh, this is, I find, uh, awkward to use. Uh, you need uh, more than two hands, or it's just me, maybe. I, can't uh, get the soldering iron out of the way and get this in there and get that to suck the uh, solder properly. So I thought I don't do enough of this to uh, go and invest uh, six or seven hundred bucks on uh, you know real uh, North American made uh, stuff. But um, I thought I'd take a chance on twenty five bucks. So. makes noise. Uh, you'll wait forever for this thing to heat. Um, I mean, it's pretty much useless. Let's have another look at this box. Now, my Chinese is not all that good, but I think I can make out this part. It says uh, 220 volt, 50 hertz. Here's what happened. Well, even though the manufacturer put a 110 volt cord on the end of this, 
it's still a 220 volt device, so it's only working at half capacity. No wonder the poor reviews. This thing needs 220 volts to work properly. I have a solution. Have a look at this. Get 120 volts up here. 120 volts down here. 240 volts over here. How is that possible? This is a uh, split plug. There's a separate fuse for this top and separate fuse for this bottom. And they're one on each uh, phase. So of course, between here and here on this split plug, there's 240 volts potential. I'm lucky to have one of these. I've got a couple of these here in the shop. Uh, they're typically only found um, around your kitchen counter. You'll have uh, three or four of these out there by code. The rest of the outlets are typically not split like this. They're one fuse for both top and bottom. So I want to exploit this. You guys are familiar with these uh, outlet multipliers, right? You can get six out of two. Turns out, fairly easy to pry these things open. Just cut along here with the uh, utility knife. And you end up with this situation. I mark these two prongs. They're the neutrals. Then you can pull them out, cut them to length. You know, they uh, end up flush here. Then, I did some uh, cross wiring out here. Now there are high resolution images that I uh, share with you. You'll find uh, the links uh, in the description box and you can uh, get a lot better uh, view of what happened here. But the end result, and I've also labeled all along here that this is a 220 volt, you know, modified unit. So now, once it's reassembled, a little bit of hot glue all around here, snap it together, and you've got this modified unit that takes a split plug at 110 volt and is able to um, tap into the 240 volt potential difference there is on the two, like the L1 and the L2, the two phases. Um, not everybody's going to be on board with this, right? Um, and that's cool. Uh, that's what it's all about. We're big boys, big girls. We all make our choices, right? I choose to go this way. Some other people will also choose to go this way. Some won't. That's all right. That's the way it's supposed to be. I also want to point out to you that I've tested the, this uh, tool to make sure that it was electrically isolated everywhere. That includes these little screws, uh, the body everywhere, and even this metal area. It is isolated from Earth. There is no electrical potential difference between all of this and Earth. You're not going to get a shock. It's good. Off camera, I was able to take the solder joints off of this uh, three pin bus and came out really nice. I'm going to demonstrate uh, there's a two pin bus right here. Looks nice and clean. Let's see if I can uh, take that out. There you go. I love it. So for 25 bucks, this is pretty nice. Uh, at 220 volt, it does the job it's supposed to do. These guys take care.